Hello, welcome back to my ePortfolio, where we are looking at various CAD design softwares used in the landscape industry. Today, we are looking at another industry-specific software, Real-Time Landscape Architect. Like in Dynascape and AutoCAD, Real-Time Landscape Architect has the same basic tools of one-to-one -one scaling, layers, and importing the background template. The background image was imported similarly to the other softwares and then was scaled using the scale tool. The scale tool in real time is straightforward and allows the image to be re resized so it is in one-to-one -one scale. This is helpful because you can then draw in real-world dimensions on the drawing. After the image is imported, it can be moved to the proper layer. Layers in real time must be manually added in and can be locked and turned off as necessary. This keeps the drawing organized and prevents it from being overcrowded when working on finer detail areas. After the background image is scaled, it is locked onto the layer so it can no longer be selected. This was all done in the plan view in real time. The three main spaces in real time are the plan, perspective, and walkthrough tabs. The plan view is a top-down 2D view of the drawing and is useful for making the preliminary regions on the image. The plan view is also where the final viewpoints and plant lists are placed. The plan view is what is printed out after the size and scale of the drawing are picked. Similarly to Dynascape, this is done before the drawing is started and a box is drawn on the plan view showing what area will be printed. After the drawing is completed, the plan view is what will be printed out. The perspective view is a feature unique to real time. The perspective view is a 3D tab of real time. All the same actions can be done in both the perspective and plan views, but some actions are better in one view over another. For example, to place one singular plant, it is easier to be in the perspective view but to insert a plant row it is easier to do in the plan view. Perspective view is helpful because it gives size and height to objects placed and helps to give a better understanding of space, specifically with plants. The walkthrough view is a wonderful tool to use when selling a design to clients. It is like the perspective view in that it is also 3D, but is more cinematic and the time of day visual setting can be changed to show the landscape under all light conditions. Walkthroughs also turn on all landscape lights when the environment is set to night and add fire to fire pits. There are two different types of walkthroughs. The first one is just a free roam where you can walk around and look at the design. The second type of walkthrough is a camera path using cameras that can be placed in the design and adjusted to various heights and angles. The walkthrough is especially helpful to give clients a 3D visual of what their space could look like. Realtime has quite a wide variety of site amenities. On their website, they boast that they have 17,000 design items included and 7,400 plants. If that is not enough, you can also import models from SketchUp's 3D warehouse, which has many more to choose from. Realtime also has the ability to rename and change the color of objects to get them to look as realistic as possible. It has all different site amenities ranging from tables and chairs to cars, and even placemats or trash cans. These subtle little features add a lot to the design by giving scale, purpose, and style. There are also many plants, hardscape objects, and patterns to choose from. The object specific tools are another specific feature to real time that are made for designing specific areas. There is a generic region tool that can be used for many different areas like mulch beds and lawn spaces. The regions conform to the terrain of the area. The patio tool is used for designing hardscape spaces. It has preloaded generic pavers and has a few brands of hardscape material also included. The difference between the patio and region tools is that the patio tool does not conform to the terrain of an area. It has a preset height of 2 inches and has a border that can be turned on and off. Another tool is the retaining wall tool which is used to form either straight or curvilinear retaining walls. The walls can have their material change and have a cap automatically put on them which can have the overhang adjusted. Another tool is the fence tool which is a linear tool that places a fence automatically and can have the material of the fence change and gates added to it. The deck tool allows decks to be easily built by drawing the perimeter of the deck and editing the style of it. The height of the deck can be changed and the railings have the option to be turned on and off. Another tool we used was the house tool. When using the house tool, the house must be looked at as modular and something that has to be pieced together in multiple houses. All these tools speed along the design process and are extremely easy to use. There are three different plant tools in real time. The first one is a singular plant tool. This is useful if you only have to place one type of plant or tree. The plant can be chosen from the plant library and can be updated easily without having to place a completely new plant. The second plant tool is the plant fill. 
We did not use this in the drawing, but it would be useful for putting in ground covering or a perennial bed. The last plant tool is the plant row tool. This is used in placing multiple plants in a row rather than having to place each one individually. The spacing and quantity of plants can be edited to fit the area or match the plant. Another helpful feature in real time is that a plant list is automatically generated and populated with plant names and quantities in the drawing. This plant list can then be inserted in the plan view. Viewpoints are real time screenshot feature. A viewpoint is a set view from the walkthrough tab that is saved and can be loaded into the exact view. When in the viewpoint, the environment settings can be changed and then screenshots can be taken. The viewpoints can be saved and then imported into the plan view to highlight various areas of the design. When looking at real-time landscape architect compared to AutoCAD and Dynascape, real-time seems to be a lot more in-depth. Being that it is an industry-specific software, real-time has a lot more landscape-oriented features compared to AutoCAD, but also takes it a step further by adding in the 3D design element. If comparing on a sole plan view 2D drafting basis, they are all fairly equal. Real-time does have a little more going on with all the different shapes and colors in the plan view. All three share the same basic 2D tools, but real-time is really set apart with its 3D capabilities. Real-time also has a built-in object library, which AutoCAD does not, and is able to import objects which Dynascape does not have. The house tool in real-time is also very intuitive and allows the house to be drawn quickly. One difference when designing in real-time is that everything is drawn from the ground up, starting with the lawn. This is because of the 3D aspect and the hierarchy of layers so they do not overlay each other improperly. Overall, looking at real-time from a cost and performance perspective, the choice is clear. Real-time Landscape Architect is only $400 and for the price you pay, you can get a lot out of it. Perhaps the biggest selling feature of real-time is that it provides a 3D perspective to really visualize your landscape space for clients. This concludes my project on Real-Time Landscape Architect. Thank you for watching.